Uh, okay, uh, so obviously there's been some interest in water in this conference, and I wanted to summarize some of the research that I've done with water and intent. And um, I guess since the picture is nice and clear, you can see the picture on the left where the man's intent to, uh, you can see, no, turn it off, right, right, don't turn it off. Uh, you can see that he's standing on a, um, on a cover here, and his intent is obviously to get the water to go out and through the hole, whereas in this slide, the, uh, <laughs> the picture on the right, the intent of the water, perhaps, is more interesting than the intent of the man, who's like a little small little guy over there. <laughs> anyway, uh, so uh, in this context, I wanted to just uh, introduce the um, uh, anomalous effect of electromagnetic fields on water, because there is a scientific rationale and basis for uh, looking at the effects of intention and consciousness on water if, in fact, we can make parallels between uh, the energy of consciousness and the energy of an electromagnetic field. And it turns out that in, 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 uh, as early as the, the 1960s, when, when the uh, Russian scientists started looking at the physical effects on the uh, uh, physical properties of water that were uh, uh, induced as a result of uh, exposure to an electromagnetic field. Sorry. Uh, what's particularly important here is that these physical effects uh, are observed after you turn off the stimulus. So, in fact, the um, uh, water seems to remember the fact that it was exposed to an electromagnetic field. Uh, in my own research, uh, in, back into the 90s, uh, which is an experiment I did with actually Bill Tiller, we looked at the difference between a magnetic field, uh, I mean the B component of a magnetic field and the ve magnetic vector potential, which for those physicists in the audience, it turns out that the A field is, a, is an important component for storing and structuring of water. But um, moving on, the list now is pretty long of the physical kinds of changes that can occur in water exposed to an electromagnetic field. And since we've been talking about oxygen content in the previous slide, uh, that's, uh, I think, of interest that the um, oxygen content in the water can change. Um, now, in the Bioelectromagnetic Society, they've been studying the effects of electromagnetic fields on biological systems for many years. It, uh, again, it was um, the Russians who decided, well, maybe these effects are mediated by water, as Gary had alluded in his talk. And what they did was they exposed water to an electromagnetic field and then added the treated water to cells in culture. In this particular experiment, kidney cells, they, which were exposed to a magnetic field, a very high frequency magnetic field, 42 gigahertz. And then they were able to measure the change in the electrophysiological properties of these cells, in particular the opening and closing of the potassium channel, which you can see on the bottom is very much enhanced by the information stored in the water. You can see this effect uh, as much as 20 minutes after the, effect, uh, the exposure. So this clearly is an anomaly in terms of any kind of physics to explain this phenomenon. Um, now, that's the background. Of course, here we're more interested in effects of intention on water. So we start with, can intention also change the physical properties of water? Uh, Douglas Dean first did these experiments back in 1983. Stephen Schwartz followed by uh, similar kind of experiments uh, using uh, you know, various forms of spectroscopy to measure the change in the water. Uh, I did some similar experiments in 1940, 1994 and published it in JSE, as it happens, uh, my first introduction to the society. Um, and I did some other experiments with Raman spectroscopies, unpublished. And of course, we all know Dr. Emoto's work uh, changing the crystallization patterns of water exposed to intention. So um, I wanted to elaborate more on uh, my experiments because not only can you change the, the structural properties of water, but when you add these water, this water to a biological system, you can influence the biological system just as has been done with an electromagnetic field. Uh, the first series of experiments that I did uh, was um, when I was working at the Institute of Heart Math, and we uh, were demonstrated that 
Um, water could change the, in fact, ultraviolet absorption spectroscopy uh, was used, which actually measures the oxygen content of the water. And this was altered, and then when you added that uh, treated water, water treated with the intention of a love, the loving intention to just actually, it wasn't an intention to specifically affect the water, the intention was just to be in a loving state and direct that intention to the water. That water, when it was added to DNA, actually caused the DNA to wind. And those of you who were here last year heard the summary of my research on DNA as a target for uh, direct healing intention. But in this particular case, it was through the mediated through water. Uh, since Dean is, uh, Raiden is in this audience, I don't really want to elaborate on his experiments, but he repeated the Emoto experiments and was able to show that water treated uh, with positive intentions uh, were perceived the, uh, differently. Uh, the aesthetic appeal was different when you, when you looked at the images that were uh, uh, structured by the water. So uh, this is the first series of uh, background information that, that you can transfer the intention that is stored in water. In the present experiments that I want to talk about, we're going to uh, use a different model system. In this case, it's the growth of tumor cells in vitro. Uh, in the abstract, I mentioned other experiments that I've done with lymphocyte proliferation, but in fact, um, I want to mention not those experiments, but more the ones with tumor cells. Um, uh, in this case, the uh, water was treated and then with that water, you make tissue culture medium and you add that tissue culture medium to the cells and measure the growth of tumor cells. Just to be technical, here's the detailed explanation. The tumor cells were split into 12 Petri dishes. Half were treated and half were non-treated simultaneously in a second room with a non-healer who was mimicking the action of the healer, kind of doing this with their hands and trying to um, simulate what was going on. The treatment was a 15-minute treatment. Um, the uh, experiment was done blindly. The, uh, the, the uh, treated tissues were, were blind, blindly labeled so that when I actually did the experiment, I didn't know which was which. Actually, there were two kinds of experiments done, either direct experiments where the healer treated the tumor cells directly or where they treated the water. The cells were harvested and uh, DNA fraction was obtained. And then what you basically measure is the amount of radioactive thymidine incorporated into DNA compared to the total amount of protein, which is a measure of cell growth. If there, and there are biochemists in the, this audience, one of the few audiences I talk to where there are biochemists. <laughs> Great. So that, there's the protocol. Um, the particular healer that I used was Leonard Lasko, who's written a book called Healing with Love. And he was actually able to, with the aid of meditation, obtain certain transpersonal states of consciousness where he could actually uh, um, obtain different intentions. Um, he had, in this particular experiment, he used three different intentions. One was for the cells, now they, remember these are tumor cells, to return to the natural order and harmony of their normal non-tumorous state. Intention number two was unconditional love with no specific direction to the cells. And intention number three was the release of diseased energy into the void. If any healers in the audience, this would kind of make sense for us. Well, you know, we all understand unconditional love. But anyway, th this is the kind of uh, healing intentions that he used with his uh, uh, people who he healed. Okay, so the first results were obtained uh, when I want to show you the difference between direct and indirect treatment, kind of the question that I had asked Gary. So when I say indirect, I mean the, the water was treated and then the water was given to the cells. And the, on the uh, y-axis here, we have the percent inhibition of growth. So the tumor cells slowed down their growth in all cases. The uh, magnitude of the effect is actually quite similar, 25% versus 38%, direct versus indirect. Yes, direct is a little bit stronger, but quite similar. Okay, now here's an unusual, um, oh, I should go back. This particular intent